today, we even see in the church that the church is lowering their standards just to fit in, and fit in with the world. And so it is a dangerous place for us to be. And God calls us to live a life of separation. He calls us to uh, separate. He's telling us to be separate from the evil and from the appearance of evil. And God, God asks us to deliberately and voluntarily separate ourselves right, right. from that which is evil. Someone once said this, that separation is the power to, do, to live in the world, but not to be of the world. That's right, isn't it? You understand what I'm saying? When we use that term world, you hear that a lot in church and, and things we're talking about. You see, as saved people, we're, we're just passing through this world. Yeah. This, is a, this is a temporary form for us. One day we will graduate. If you are saved, you will graduate. You will move on to heaven. Right. Yes. And, and which was such a, a better place for us to be. So and when, we, when we refer to the world, if, you, if you've heard preachers refer to the world, we're talking about the lost people. We're talking about the ways of the world. You know, hear that. Well, the Apostle Paul here in this scripture, he draws a clear line. He draws a clear line for us today on what a believer and a non-believer is and what they should and they should not do. Beginning in verse number 14, he tells us not to be uh, unequally yoked together. You ever heard that term before, yoked? Anybody ever, look up? Anybody ever know what yoked means? Raise your hand. Anybody? One person. Let me tell you what yoked means. Okay. You know the girls yesterday? Where y'all at, girls? Right there. Where you? Right there. Yesterday they were yoked together. That was their, remember their punishment? Right. And they had that, the bands, of the uh, uh, bandanas around them, they had to be yoked together the whole time. Well, that's what yoke is. Back in the old days, uh, and still in the days, if you go to Amish country in uh, Pennsylvania, you still see it today, that they will yoke two cows together, or two uh, horses together, and they'll plow the fields. And so they have this thing called yoke, in shape like this. And it's got two, two um, things on the bottom that go around the necks. And so that they're yoked together, so they go and do things together. And so what, what Paul is saying there is, is, do not be unequally yoked together. And so that's a farming term. And that, but that, that you wouldn't you wouldn't yoke a donkey and a horse together. Right. You you wouldn't yoke a goat and a bull together. You wouldn't, you wouldn't yoke uh, something like that to plow your fields. And so Paul is saying to believers that we should not be unequally yoked with non-believers. Now listen to me. Eli, turn around. Pay attention. I ain't afraid of going away. <laughs> and he's, he's saying to ourselves, they're saying to us, we as believers, as yes. Christians, when right. you claim the name of Christ, Listen. You're held to a higher standard. That's right. right. Yeah. That's right. You, you go around saying that you're a Christian. You, people are going to look at you different. Yeah. And they're going to expect more out of you. Right. Uh, as you claim the name of Christ. They're, they're not going to expect you, as a Christian, they're not going to expect you to be talking about people around the back. Right. right. As a Christian, you're not going to be expected. They're, they're going to be surprised when they hear you using curse words. Right. Yeah. When you say, oh, I'm a Christian, but you use some curse words. You say, right. you say I, I'm a child of God, but you talk about people coming in the back, you stab them in the back. Yes. That's not a Christian. Amen. And so people are going to look at you, and they're going to hold you to different standards. And so here, the Apostle Paul was saying, uh, we are not to be unequally yoked with non-believers. You say, how can I reach my family? How can I reach my friends if I distance myself from them? Well, listen. That's not what he's saying. They're saying that we can't, we, it's not saying that we can't love them. It's not saying that we can't witness to them. It's not saying that you can't share the gospel with them. It's just saying that we should not group ourselves with them. That's right. So in other words, as, as you as a believer, you should not be partaking or participating in things that worldly people are partaking or participating in. Things that your lost friends and your family are, 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 are participating in. Don't yoke yourself. Listen, if you hang out with people... Some of y'all be going to college soon. You hang out with people that party and drink, you're going to be yoked to those people. That's right. Help right. Yeah. You, you're going to be, you're going to, if you if you smoke and you party, or you, you hang out and you say, well, I'm not going there, I'm just hanging out with them. You're yoked to them. Right. Right. Because right. you have set yourself with them. You have, you have grouped yourself with them. Mm -hmm. 
You are seen as being yoked with him. And Paul goes on to say that, that, that what fellowship is, that right, why, why does, what Paul says is, why, why would righteous people, or what fellowship does righteous people have with unrighteous people? What communion does light have with darkness? Have you ever been somewhere after you've been saved and you think that you, that you used to go before and you think, man, I don't fit in here anymore? Yep. Yeah. Right. That's good. Yeah. I grew up in the ghetto. Literally. <laughs> but I loved it. <laughs> and it wasn't scary back then. Now it's probably a little scary. Yes. But, but, but in my teenage years, I, I was saved when I was 11 years old. 32 years ago, on the 19th of this month, I was Amen. saved. 32 years. Amen. Older than most of these people. And even these other preachers. <coughs> Almost as old as some of them. But I, I was saved at 11 years old. But I grew up in the, in the ghetto. Hardcore. I had a public school. I had uh, hardcore friends that were, that were doing bad things, smoking marijuana, and uh, doing things that they should have never done, and, and breaking into houses, and right. doing all those things. And I hung out with them, even though I was saved. I was yoked with them. Yeah. And see, I realize now, as I get older, I shouldn't have been that way. Right. We should, we should, we should um, not unequally yoke ourselves with other things like that. Verse 17, Paul urges us. Look at that verse we stood up about. This is, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. He urges the Corinthian believers to come out from among them and be separate. See, this is what this is what was going on this time. Let me tell you real quick. What was going on in this time that some of the believers in the church, uh, they were they were they were saved, they were they were going to church, but they were still going back to the old temples. Or the other temples, they were still going back over there, and they were sac they were still sacrificing to little g gods. Right. Even though they were saved, they were still going over there. They were still going, and the reason they did it, they, they were new converts, but they, they did not separate from their old ways. You see, when you get saved, you you, you stop your old ways. Right. It may not be an immediate thing. It may not be that that's something that happens either, like, like just like that, but as God and the Holy Spirit start working you, right. you will not want to go back to those old ways. You will not want to be around those old type of friends. You will not want to be around those things. But this is what they were doing. They, they, were, they were going back and they were sacrificing to the, the little gods. And the reason they were doing it is they were afraid that they were not going to be allowed to no longer buy, no longer to sell in their community because um, they associated with the Christian ones. They were alienated. They were ostracized. Let me tell you this. Living a separated life will not always be popular. Right? It will not always be popular. Let me tell you this. Living a separated life will be lonely at some times. Yeah. Yeah. It will be lonely at times. But living a, test, living a separated life is necessary for yes. a Christian to maintain their testimony. Yes. Yes. And to maintain a relationship, a close relationship with Jesus Christ. Right. You see, do you know this today that you have a testimony? Mm -hmm. You have a testimony that you've been saved. And so uh, you, you have a, a, what you're a, you're a walking testimony. You have a testimony about your salvation and how you were saved. But then, as I said, you're building higher standards. You're held in different ways. So people watch you. So people see how you are. And people watch how you go and how you do. And that's your testimony. Separation is emphasized all the way from Genesis all the way to Revelation. It's a prominent biblical doctrine. Ox in, in, in Deuteronomy 22, oxes and donkeys cannot be together together. In Leviticus 19, you can't plant two types of seeds together in one hole. In Leviticus also 19, you weren't able to wear wool and linen together. They had, they had different examples. All these things were given so that people could understand the doctrine or the lesson of separation. Separation touches on every part of our life, public, private, and the pleasures that we see. So we have to ask ourselves this. Every day, maybe every time, every opportunity that we have to rise to us, we have something come up to us. Will this glorify God or will it not? Right. Will it promote or will this endanger my Christian life? Yes. Will, will, it, will it help or will it, will it hinder 
my other brother and my other sister in Christ. Hmm. Will what I'm doing affect their walk with God? Just picture this. Let's say, Brother Justin, we'd like to go out and leave. Brother Lee, Brother George and Earl, how it, one of my favorite places to eat is Buffalo Wild Wings. Is that the best cheeseburger around? I don't like the name, but <laughs> so let's say that me and Brother Justin Gordon and Lee, we're eating at Buffalo Wild Wings. And we're turning up to you. Mm, come on. True. <laughs> What's your name? Travis. Oh, I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say Travis and his mom and his dad come rolling up into love for a while. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they see four preachers over there turning up to boys. Yeah. I know some of the terminals. <laughs> <laughs> what would you think? <laughs> well, that's the, that's the doctrine of separation. We're called to be separated. Right. right. Not just preachers, but all of us are called to be separate. Right. Right. And, and what we do, that, that can hinder, Travis could think, man, look, the preacher does that. Hey, it's okay, I can go do it. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, it's all right, I act like that, or I do that, and somebody else does that. And you're like the same thing. Hey, if, if that person in my, my, my uh, youth group at church uh, it goes to school, and they're sus, and they hang around with all the other people, and then they come to church and act like a good little Christian, that's not a good testimony. Right. 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 You got a dark testimony. Yeah. Amen. Your testimony, let me tell you something. When you lose your testimony, it's very hard to gain back. That's right. Yeah. It would take years to be able to gain your testimony back. Yeah. You get on Facebook or, or Instagram or whatever, Snapchat or whatever, and you start slaying cuss words and acting like a fool on there, yeah. and other people know that you go to church and you, you claim that you're a Christian, you're a bad testimony. Yeah. You have to separate ourselves from that. That's good. We, we have to separate ourselves from that. Testimony is how others see Christ in you. That's right. Yeah. Do they see Him high lifted up in your life? Right. You can wear the shirt, but in the rhythm of the wall. Mm -hmm. Do they see Him as someone that only you pick up on Sundays or when you need Him? Or do they see him as a really intricate part of your life? Now we have to remember something. And don't even forget this. Is that one thing that happens is there's many Christians and many people that fail. Mm -hmm. And we, 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 that happens. We, 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 are, we live in our flesh and we a lot of times we depend on, we go back to our fleshly ways, our earthly, our worldly ways. Mm -hmm. But we should never force our ideas and our personal convictions on other people. Mm -hmm. You'll never win anybody to Christ by forcing them. That's right. You'll win them by Christ by living in front of them. Right. And loving them the way that Christ has called us to do. Just because today you're convicted about the way that you dress or the way that you certain things. It's, it's not your right to push that on people. That's good. Just because you feel convicted about a, a certain type of music or or, 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 or or certain type of thing, that's not your right to, to push that on other people and make them feel guilty. Because you know what? You're not the Holy Spirit. You've got to let the Holy Spirit do its convicting for the self, for their self, for itself. We have to remember we're not the Holy Spirit. He's not calling us to, to, to make other people live a separated life. He's calling us to live a separated life. And by our example in front of people, we'll encourage those others to do that. We ought to have them tell our children, just worry about yourself. You know, say, your married mom and dad ever told you that? Stop worrying about everybody else, just worry about yourself. We do. We have to. We have to think about ourselves. We need to, to focus on ourselves. Our life is a testimony for other people. Don't forget that. You are the only Jesus that some people see. Right. Right. So what you go through yourself for is how other people are going to see Jesus. Do you want Jesus to be seen in a bad way? 
Do you want Jesus to be seen in a, in a, in a derogatory manner or, or some other way? I just want you to think about that. Think about our lives. Being, being separated, we've got to keep ourselves separated. I don't ever think that you're too big or too beyond getting mixed up with the world because it can happen. Right. To you. Yes, that's right. But don't ever think that you're too good to get caught up in lies and deceit. Don't ever think that it will never happen to you. How many Christians have backslidden? Yeah. Because they've not been thinking and they've gotten equally other. What about girlfriends and boyfriends? Yeah. You, you should not be dating. I really shouldn't be dating. But that's your parents, whatever. <laughs> Annie, my daughter, she's not going to date until she's on third. <laughs> <laughs> but really, if, you, if, you, if your parents are okay with it, you're, I mean, you know, I, I think it's so fun when you're like 12 or 13. We all were going out. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you going? Right. <laughs>
Christians maybe were and other people. They may they may dishonor the Lord by doing going to questionable places. They may mix up with other people and blaspheme his name. They, they may they may do other things, but you don't have to be that way. You cannot do that way if you want to do your best for Jesus. So if we really want to be like the Lord, we want to separate ourselves from Christ. He was holy. He was blameless. He was pure. He was set apart from sinners. And do you know what? We're called to be the same. Right. Alright, three points. I'm going to give you a little bit just super quick. God makes three promises to people who really separate from life. These two verses, 17 and 18. I'll read them again just for the sake of it. Wherefore, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and my daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Three things. The first thing he says that I will receive you. See, one day you will stand before him. Right. He will not turn away from you. We will have to answer this for you in our lives. Yep. The second thing is he says, I will be a father. I didn't have a dad growing up. I was a single parent home. And so I, when I got saved and went out, I realized I had a father. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Amen. Father. And that verse is telling us that, that means that he will guide you, he will protect you, he, he will fill you, he will complete you. He, 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 you will not need the world and the world's ways because you have Christ living in you. Yeah. People look for other things, for affection from other people, yeah. or, or affection, or, or, or um, you want you to notice me, or all those things. You want, you look for something else to fill you when you should be looking for Christ. Right, right. He will. You don't need anything, anything else in this world. Then he says, "You'll be my sons and daughters." You know what that means? That means you will be proud of you. You will be blessed because you have chosen to Sacrifice and to live separated by the human work. Do you take the challenge? That's my question. You're in an early stage in your life. This is this is a good time to make new decisions. But you and you say, well, well, maybe it's too early for me to do it. No, it's a perfect time. If you're saved. The majority of you raise your hand today that you're saved. You say, Lord, I'm going to live a separated life. That's good. I'm not going to go the ways of the world. Lord. I'm not going to partake in drinking and partying and doing things that I shouldn't do. Yeah. Holy Spirit, work on me. Holy Spirit, remind me that those things are wrong. Yeah. And that I need to be separate because other people look at me. And then I want them to see Christ in me. Can you stand to your feet and just bow my eyes